Here we have a ribbon of magnesium. Magnesium is a metal, has the properties of luster. You can see it's shiny, it's malleable, it's bendable, can conduct heat and electricity. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to react this magnesium with the oxygen in the air. We need a little activation energy to get the magnesium to react with the oxygen, and there it is. So oxygen's reacting with the magnesium ribbon and it's releasing a lot of light and heat energy. This is one of the brightest lights that is produced by a chemical reaction. They often use magnesium in fireworks for these bright bursts of white light. And also it's extremely high, hot. You can get very, very, very high temperatures from this chemical reaction. Now, coming off the light, you can see a white ribbon, and that is the magnesium oxide that's being produced. So magnesium atoms are being bonded to the oxygen atoms in the air to form in that magnesium oxide product. Now we have an up close look at the magnesium oxide. You can see it has a white color, that's one of the properties, and you can see it's very brittle. Basically it's going to turn into a powder if you touch it. How do magnesium atoms bond with oxygen atoms? Well, let's take a look at how all that works. Magnesium has 12 positive protons, has equal number of negative electrons, 12. There's two in the first energy level, eight in the second, and two in the third. The outermost energy level electrons are called valence electrons. So magnesium has two. So the electron dot diagram for magnesium shows the two valence electrons. Oxygen has eight positive protons and eight negative electrons. There's two electrons in the first energy level and six in the second. So the electron dot diagram shows the six valence electrons. Atoms need a full set of valence electrons to become stable. In magnesium's third energy level, there needs to be eight valence electrons. Otherwise, it's not stable, and oxygen also needs eight valence electrons in its outermost energy level. So these two atoms are unstable and so something has to happen for them to have a full set of valence electrons. Let's see what happens. You see magnesium is transferring this electron to oxygen and now it's over here in the third, second energy level of oxygen and magnesium's other valence electron is also transferring to oxygen. So now oxygen has eight valence electrons in the outermost energy level. And magnesium, as a result of having zero valence electrons in this third energy level, basically that energy level now does not exist anymore. So the second energy level is the outermost energy level now. So it has a full set of eight valence electrons. So now they're both stable. But as a result of losing and gaining electrons, the charge of these atoms has changed. So let's take a look at magnesium. Magnesium's overall charge is two plus because it has two more positive protons than negative electrons because it gave up two negative electrons. Oxygen gained two more negative electrons and therefore has two more negative electrons than protons. So oxygen's overall charge is two minus. Well, we have equal and opposite charged what are called ions. These are atoms that have a charge, so we have magnesium two plus ion and an oxygen two minus ion. So they're equal opposite charges, so now they're going to form a bond called an ionic bond. And now the new compound is, is magnesium oxide. This is called an ionic compound. So in a chemical reaction between magnesium and oxygen, Magnesium transfers two electrons to oxygen, creating opposite charged ions, which form an ionic bond. So now we have magnesium oxide. And if we take a look at the electron dot diagram, it shows magnesium's two valence electrons transferring over to oxygen, again, forming opposite charged ions and forming the compound magnesium oxide.